गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुर्साक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम गुरव सर्वोकाषजे भविण निधये सर्विद्या दक्षिणामूर्त नम हरि ज्ञानेन सदृश पवित्र इह विद्यते तत्स्वयं योग संसिद्ध कालेनात्मा विंदती ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मण हुत ब्रह्मेन तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्मकर्म स निर्माण मोहाजित संगदोष अध्यात्म निवृत्त काम विमुक्ता सुख दुख संग गूढ़ापदम तत् Last time we discussed that human beings are endowed with choice. One of the best ways of using this privilege is to drop all the choices. becoming choiceless becoming choiceless means you have totally accepted this moment as it is choice is only when you think there is something better or something worse when you are okay with what is then choice is irrelevant to you and this ability to drop your choice willingly let go of your choice is called surrender and it is in this state of choicelessness that a true prayer is born you are only able to drop your choice when you know that you are anyway not in control choice means that i have a control over something are you getting what i'm saying when you realize that i really have got no control then there is no point of a choice either and this choicelessness comes from a mature intellect and when you drop your choices at the same time become fully aware of this phenomenon called life what is happening right now in this body in this mind beyond the mind that state is called as choiceless awareness and that is meditation meditation is a state wherein you accept the present moment totally and you are aware of what is happening right now you are in sync with life as it is right now and you are happy with it and if you are not happy you are at least okay with it total alertness yet total letting go that is meditation however if we are spending a lot of time in the realm of our mind then choice becomes useful and in the last chapter we saw how 
when you utilize this choice you can elevate yourself to become a purushottama see at the level of pure consciousness everything is the same there is nothing higher or lower only at the level of the mind there is something better something worse something good something bad something you like something you don't like that is where a choice comes and if you have to execute a choice execute it in such a way that it uplifts you to a state of choiceless awareness what happens if you don't execute that choice properly where do you end up that's what we are going to see today what happens when you don't prioritize the self what happens when you hold on to matter more than the spirit what are the pitfalls of being in ignorance what happens when you don't realize the true existence what happens when you don't realize the influence the gunas have on you and you make no effort to handle the gunas properly that's what krishna is going to explain usually this is explained in every upanishad as a passing note as a footnote most upanishads they glorify the brahman they glorify the self but somewhere in one shloka or a one line they say what is the consequence of not following the self of not going for the knowledge of the self in the kena upanishad which we recently discussed what it says is mahavinashti he says you have to know about the self right now and if you don't he says it's a big loss mahavinashti he says it's like you know whenever you sign a contract there's always a fine print we rarely read the fine print but we almost always sign for it and this footnote or the fine print which is just kept as a passing mention krishna has made into a whole chapter just to emphasize that what is the big opportunity you are letting pass right in front of you as the time is ticking by as the sands in the hourglass are falling down and you are moving towards death what is it that you need to focus on whatever the time you have got right now living in this realm of the mind where you should focus this time and if you don't focus what happens how you will come back and do the repetitive patterns of life so krishna says there are basically two types of beings and he calls them daivi and asuri the divine and the demonic but just i think it would be more appropriate if we can take them as sattvic and non sattvic personalities in that way we are not making one very good one very bad we are only saying that two different ways in which the beings are and he says why do we know to know about this what is the need to be aware of this he says it is because of this daivi sampat vimokshaya nibandhaya asuri mata when you hold on to this divinity aspect of you then it leads you to freedom but if you hold on to the asuri aspects those qualities which are non sattvic those attributes which are not sattvic then you will move more and more tightly bound it leads to bondage what is bondage you know when you want to make a curry or something what you need you need a few ingredients you need some spice you need fire you need water you need some salt and you need some dal or vegetables just these four five ingredients how many different types of curries you can make essentially all these curries are the same at one level but at another level they are all different similarly we all are made up of the same five elements at one level we are all the same but what is it that differentiates us is determined by the formula of karma 
It's a very beautiful story. I think we might have discussed this before. Long time ago when Brahma created human beings, he created them with equal attributes. They created them all equal, with equal privileges, equal attributes, equal abilities, both internally and externally. And once this first batch of beings lived their life and died and they were ready to be to under reborn to go into the second batch, then Brahma noticed that they were all not equal anymore. They were all very, very different. And he could categorize them into three groups. One group, he called them as Devas. Devas are ones who were identified with an attitude of abundance. One who has an attitude of abundance in life is called Deva. It does not have to do anything with what you have, how much you possess, but with this feeling that I have, I am privileged, I have more. When this attitude of abundance dawns in you, then you become generous. Generosity and dispassion are outcomes of a sense of abundance. You know there is <coughs> enough food in the kitchen, so you are not feverish about eating. So you are dispassionate about the food in your kitchen. You know when you want it will be available and you can eat. And you are generous enough to invite people and feed them as well. Because you will never think, what if I will not have any food to eat? So generosity and dispassion comes from a sense of abundance. And devas are the ones who have utilized all the privileges, all the faculties that have been provided by divinity to the proper extent, in the optimal way. And there is a second group of people, of beings, who have used some of the attributes to the best possible extent, but misused quite a lot of them. And that group were called humans. And those humans were characterized, their main attitude towards life was insecurity. How much ever you have, you feel that there isn't, it isn't enough. How many ever desires are fulfilled, you have more desires. Nothing satisfies you, there is no contentment. Insecurity brings possessiveness, greed, a desire to hold, a sense of lack, attachment. And then with the third category, who have completely unaware of the gifts that the divine has bestowed upon us and are completely destroying their life, completely misusing, abusing all the faculties that have been provided to us. This body is such a phenomenon, this mind is such a phenomenon. Science has advanced so much, but it hasn't been able to generate a computer which is even one millionth capable as this mind is. This is such a phenomenon we carry around, but we don't value it. And people who don't value it at all are completely oblivious for the gifts they have with them and are constantly moaning and complaining and upset. They are called Dhanavas or Asuras. And Asuras are characterized by insensitivity and inertia. So, at the end of the day, all of them are his own children. So, Brahma wanted all of them to be happy. So, he said, look, though I endowed you with equal attributes, you all have developed into different beings. This is because of the way you have utilized the attributes and that has led to what is called as karma. It is because of your karma which was propelled by the actions which you did in your first batch you are like this. You are just held within that by yourself. I have got nothing to do with it. It's all your own doing. However, 
It's only an external aspect of your existence. You all can still rise above your innate nature. And there is a secret for each one of you. For the devas, he gave a secret key. He said that key is called Dhamma. Is See, sometimes when there is abundance, there is indulgence as well. There is lack of gratitude. So he says, have Dhamma, have a bit of a say. When you indulge, you will fall down. You will, you will waste all the privileges. Once they are exhausted, you will fall down again. For humans, he said, dana, practice generosity. That is why seva is so important on the path. Seva is being generous with your time, with your strength, with your resources. And that dana will uplift you from this, bring you a lot of security, bring you contentment and contentment will take away the insecurity. And for the asuras, he said, practice daya, compassion. Your insensitivity will make you very cruel and rude and harsh. So develop this compassion and with that you will rise above this insensitive nature and become sensitive. You know, the more you are on the path, the more you meditate, you become so sensitive to life. When somebody speaks loud, you feel something in you is shaken. If you are watching a television, any little violence, you feel, I can't take it. The system is so sensitive. Something a little spicy or something a little out of the way, you have it, then your body feels completely terrible. This is not weakness, this is delicateness. That is why blossoming in consciousness is always denoted by a flower. It's called flowering of consciousness because flower is delicate. It can be crushed easily, it's not like a stone on which you can even pour acid, nothing will happen. So these three realms of beings also represent the three primal gunas. The tamas, the rajas and the sattva. The asuras, the humans and the devas. But here Krishna puts them into two categories only. He says you are a human, you can either become a deva or you can drop into asura. When you become a asura, you are so tightly bound to the world. So utilize your choice to move towards becoming a deva. And thereby you will be able to become a purushottama. You will have the best of both the worlds. And then he also reassures Arjuna. He says, Mahashucha Sampadam Daivim Abhijato Si Pandava. He says, Arjuna, don't worry. I know you are a Daivi Purusha. You are bound to enlightenment. You are on the path. Don't worry. You are not an Asura. This is the role of the Master. Master never sees any defect in you. He will say, don't worry. You are there. You are on the right path. The very fact that you are sitting and listening to this means that you have come a long way. Otherwise, you are not even interested. It can be somebody in your own house who are absolutely disinterested in all this, in the self, in the spirit, and you can't have a conversation about this at all. You will end up being nowhere. So it is true that because Arjuna was privileged and daivi, the deva could come and sit with him and talk to him. He thought he's capable, eligible enough, he is qualified enough to receive this knowledge. So cultivating the Daivi Gunas takes you to liberation, freedom. What is freedom? Freedom from this algorithm of karma, which determines this is how I want, this is how I don't like, to everything is okay, this is also okay, that is also okay, that is freedom. Not being stuck in situations and choices and prejudices. So first, Krishna says, what are the attributes of the wise? And then he goes to talk about the attributes of the asuras. So he gives a lot of qualities. So he says, abhayam. One who feels secure. These are the qualities 
of the daivi person abhayam sattva samshuddhi one who is faculties are pure gnana yoga vyavasthita one who is not only interested in knowledge but also is soaked in knowledge who is established in knowledge danam damascha yagnascha swadhyaya tapaha arjavam one who is generous one who has a say over the senses one who puts 100% into actions without giving too much importance to the outcome of the action without attaching himself to the fruit of action swadhyaya one who is always constantly reflecting upon what is happening in this body and mind who is very much in awareness being interested in your own self is swadhyaya being interested in somebody else is gossip so somebody who is interested in himself not in a selfish way but in in inquisitive way in a mode of inquiry tapa one who is able to endure one who is able to accept the opposite willingly without resistance arjava sincerity one who is sincere in whatever he does when you don't understand saying that i really didn't understand what was happening when you don't have a good meditation saying that oh, today meditation i didn't feel anything at all i was just sitting there and thoughts were coming going i was bored that is sincerity it's very important to be sincere on the path otherwise you will not progress unless you know where you stand how will you know where you have to go ahimsa ahimsa means lack of aggression you see this how aggressive you are in your speech in your thoughts in your actions that is ahimsa lack of aggression satyam akrodha one who is interested in truth akrodha one who is not engulfed by anger tyagaha one who is able to renounce one is able to let go shanti hi one who is at peace apaishunam apaishunam means one who is not harsh one who is does not see faults in people daya compassionate bhuteshu daya compassionate towards all beings aluluptvam this is holding aluluptvam means trying to hold that comes out of insecurity aluluptvam means is okay to let go mardavam is delicateness softness in the consciousness khreer chapalam khreer means um, what do you say modesty khreer achapalam means lack of chapala means very fickle steady achapala means steady so these are the qualities then tejaha radiance kshama forgiveness druti druti as we already said is a combination of commitment patience and discipline shaucham cleanliness of purity adroha means lack of enmity towards anybody na atimanita not being very proud or giving too much importance to what people talk about you think about you bhavanti sampadam daivim abhijatasya but these are the qualities of the daivi person a person of an elevated consciousness or a sattvic person you can call what abhayam secure or fearlessness sattva samshuddhi purified faculties gnana yoga vyavasthitah 
established in knowledge, dhanam, generous, say over the senses, being 100% in action, constantly reflecting on oneself, able to endure, accepting the opposites, sincere, lack of aggression, non-violent, interested in truth, devoid of anger, renunciate, able to let go, at peace, peaceful, not finding fault with people, compassionate amongst all beings, not hoarding anything, delicate, modest or humble and achapalam, steady, not fickle, radiant, forgiveful, committed, disciplined, clean or pure, lack of enmity to anybody and not worrying too much about or not basing your lifestyle on trying to get credits from others. These are the qualities of the Daivi person. Then he says, Damba, Darpa, Abhimanaha, Krodha, Parushyam evacha, Agnanam cha abhijatasya partha sampad sampadam asuri. See, sampad means wealth. So, or what is your possession? So, what are the possessions of the asuri? Damba. Damba means hypocrisy. Not being truthful to yourself and to others. Darpa, arrogance. Abhimana, egoistic. Krodha, angry. Parushya is being aggressive or harsh. Agnana, ignorant. These are the primary qualities of the Asura. So he says, this is the beginning and the now I will continue. Pravruttincha nivruttincha janana vidura asuraha. This is very interesting. Asura or a non-sattvic person is one who does not know when to be proactive, when to keep quiet. What to hold on and what to let go. This is a great skill to know which battles to fight and which battles to let go and surrender. So when you don't have this skill, you end up in situations which drains you enormously. Inability to let go is a big, big problem. You hold on so tightly to situations because they are not according to how you want. And that drains your energy. This is, that is a quality of a non-sattvic person. Pravruttimcha nevruttimcha jana, jana na vidur asuraha. He does not know when to be proactive and when to withdraw. He does not follow the inner intelligence. But what does he follow? He follows the conditioning from the crowd, from the society. What I want? What everybody wants, let me look at it. Probably that is also what I want. What will I do? Let me see what everybody is doing. That is what I will do. This is a non-sattvic attitude. Pravruttimcha nevruttimcha jana na vidur asurahi does not know what to hold on to, what to let go. And because he follows the conditioned response of the crowd, he ends up being tired, exhausted, stressed and discontented. Na shaucham na picha acharo na satyam teshu vidyate. Why is it, why is he not able to prioritize the right things? And why is he following the crowd? Because he says, there is no purity. When there is no purity in the inner faculties, no intuition arises in you. No grace flows through you. It says, na shaucham. There is no purity. See, you, all you need to have is purity in your intentions. Let, see, all the Shanti Mantras have got such pure intentions. Let everybody be happy. Let there not be any misery to anybody. Yeah? So, that is the attitude and intention of goodness to everyone. Shaucha means having that purity within you so that your intentions are pure. Pure intentions 
give rise to pure conduct and pure actions and that he comes na api acharo because there is no purity inside the actions are also impure they are imperfect na satyam teshu vidyate and thus they are not interested in knowledge also you see to be interested to be in this session sitting and listening to this with a desire and a willingness to listen needs a lot of filtering of your system lot of uh, purification of the system fine tuning of this system the very fact that you are here shows there is enormous amount of sattva shuddhi in you he says if that is not there neither your intentions are pure nor your actions are good and you are quite far away from truth see we all have a limited amount of energy and how you use that energy depends on you if you are going to use that energy to fight unnecessary battles to hold on to things tightly which are not very relevant then you will have not much energy to focus on things that are really relevant just look around people who are really successful in the world who are big shots big big corporate people big big businessmen and talk to your own friends who have proven themselves to be very successful in the world lot of them can't even sleep well i ask a lot of my colleagues this question how do you sleep more than 60% the answer is no i'm very light sleeper i can't sleep well at all sleep is a wealth to sleep you need a particular level of prana and particular level of stability in your system to sleep well to have a dreamless sleep you need to have even much higher level of sensitivity and stability and harmony in your system this greed and insecurity and passion to get more and more will take away that rest that stability or always shake look at all the politicians how secure you think they feel so he says pravrittim cha nivrittim what to hold on to what to let go that is a big skill and the non satvic individual is not aware of this then what happens then where do they end up asatyam apratishtam te jagadahur anishwaram aparaspara sambhutam kim anyat kama haitukam asatyam pratishtitam they are so established in antruth that there is no steadiness there is no they are so easily shaken their peace is so fragile their happiness is so fragile a few words you can break them you can make somebody angry you can make them restless you can make them sad and miserable apratishtitam means they are not steady at all they have no got got a strong foundation jagadahur anishwaram they think there is no creator there is no ishwara in this world they think there is nobody who is there show me prove me it is all happening and i know and i can control in this world there is so much chaos but behind that chaos there is an orderliness and that orderliness that intelligence is inbuilt in every aspect of this creation a seed knows which part of it should become the root which could become the shoot it has that strength and energy and direction to break through the earth and come up and then become a tree and then eventually a forest one cell in our body knows which should become the eyes which should become the nose this intelligence is there all the time but a non satvic individual is not able to see this that behind all this chaos there is an order all the planets are moving in this universe in a particular rhythm with a according to a particular order if that order is disturbed even a little just a little bit of earthquake see how much disaster just a little variation how much disaster happens so somebody who does not see this intelligence higher intelligence that is running the life tries to take control become a doer and tries to manipulate these things that is asatyam apratishtitam and because he has got no control and tries to establish control 
then he becomes very shaky. He is always afraid that something would be taken away. Aparaspara sambhutam kim anyat kama haitukam. He thinks this whole creation has happened because of the union of the opposite sexes. And thus, the whole purpose of life is sensory gratification, is indulgence in sex. The world has arisen. He sees that every being that is coming up, it is coming out through sex. And he says, that is the very purpose of life. He does not see a purpose of life rising beyond matter, but that which is totally attached, established in matter, that he sees as his purpose. And then what happens? And people who hold on to such rigid, polarized views which are based on untruth, Krishna uses very strong words. He calls them Alpa Buddhayaha. He says, these are people with immature intellect. And what do they do? Because of the immaturity of the intellect, no matter however rich and famous and powerful they are in the out external world, they remain insecure and polarized and biased and engage in extreme actions. And what does these extreme actions lead to? Destruction of this very world in which we live. The extreme actions of the ignorant will destroy the very foundation of life. And look what is happening in our world right now. The global warming, the pollution, the corruption. What is it? It is we cutting the same branch on which we are sitting, not realizing that we are going to fall down and get crushed. Kama Mashritya Dushpuram Dambha Mana Madan Vitaha Mohat Gruhitvya Asad Grahan Pravartante Ashuchi Vrataha. Dushpuram. Dushpuram means insatiable. Kama Mashritya. Kama means desire as well as lust. So he says, one who is just then runs behind endless desires, insatiable lust. Dhamba Mana Madanvitaha. He lives a life of hypocrisy, pride and arrogance. Mohat Grahitvya Asad Grahan Pravartante Ashuchi Vrataha. Thus, under the influence of the maya and illusion by the temporary pleasures, asad grahan pravartante ashuchi vrataha. They get attracted to asad. Asad means untruth. They get more and more attracted towards that which is temporary and get established in that. Pravartante ashuchi vrataha. And that continue to live their life in impurity. And an impure resolve. Chintam aparimeyam cha pralayantam upashritaha. And what is the consequence of that? They end up in having endless anxieties in life. Everything upsets them. They are off their balance very quickly. You can push their button very easily. Chintam aparimeyam. Aparimeyam is endless. Chintam, worries and anxieties. Pralayantam Upashritha. The only way they can be free from this worrying and being anxious is when they leave this body. Death, Pralayantam. Only in death and dissolution do they experience freedom from this unending thoughts and anxiety. This is called compulsive thinking. This is our bondage. From the time we wake up until we go to sleep, we are always chasing one thought of the, you attend to one thought and then another thought comes, you attend to that thought, you are just moving from one thought to another thought to another thought without holding on to the gap between the thoughts. This is compulsive thing, this is the real bondage for us. And he says, the only time they are free from this compulsive thinking and worrying and anxieties is either when they are in deep sleep or when they die. Of course, if you meditate, we do get, pick those intervals between the thoughts. Chintam aparimeyam cha pralayantam upashritaha. Kamopa bhoga parama eta vid iti nishchitaha. And in spite of this, in spite of being stressed and worried and tired and exhausted, you continue to do the same thing. This is the wonder of wonders in life. Look around people. They have a set pattern which is so exhausting, so tiring, so competitive and competition based. 
and still they don't want to let go they want to do the same things running behind one thing after the other one thing after the other there are hardly few people in the world today who say i've got so much free time i am busy i am busy you are, you are one project after another project after other and some people even talk in their sleep endless dreams no rest even in sleep they don't even experience deep sleep also and forget about meditation the moment they sit they become so restless there are people who tell i am okay when i am not meditating meditating when i sit for meditation suddenly i become more rush i want to open my eyes and do something go away so much rajas so much restlessness in the system kamopabhoga parama etavad iti nischitah so they don't let go of their pattern and they are very sure that in my life the ultimate purpose is to get sensory gratification have the best luxuries have the best comforts have all the pleasures as much as i can this is called a vaishya tendency if somebody wins a lottery as the what are you going to do with the money oh i'm going to buy a big house go to a big uh, resort or go to a big holiday do this what are you trying to do you're trying to please your senses keep your body comfortable it's okay as long as you are saying even if it is not there i am okay when it is there i am able to enjoy it but i am not hankering for it asha pasha shatair baddha kama krodha parayanah ihante kama bhogartam anyayena artha sanchayan asha pasha shatair baddha desires and cravings shatair baddha hundreds and thousands of them you are bound by desires there is no end to your desires as there is no contentment you are trying to seek permanent joy in impermanent things so you move to one thing it gives a transient joy and then you drop it and move to another thing and then to another so you keep on moving behind one or another asha pasha shatair baddha kama krodha parayana see when you are in the grip of desires you are very feverish and what makes your feverishness worse is kama and krodha anger and lust kama krodha parayana always following always engulfed by lust and anger lust and anger are distortion of the rajas why does he hold on to these two things there are another four distortions because these two lust and anger have got such a force behind them that you no longer are what you are when you are under their grip you lose your very control sense of balance when you are in the grip of this all crimes in world happen because of an inability to have a say over your anger and your lust isn't it says asha pasha shatair baddha kama krodha parayana ihante kama bhogartam anyayena artha sanchaya and he continues to believe that this life is only to enjoy enjoy the sensory pleasures anyayena artha sanch and for that i am ready to accumulate wealth even through unjust means anyayena artha sanchaya i am going to earn and accumulate and hold on to the wealth even through unjust means why because that will help me to attain to those gratifications those pleasures those bhogas see money brings a false sense of security and also a false sense of purpose to life you know in the olden days when somebody was not well especially when children were not well they would give them there is you know, we used to have this box with coins you know you used to put 1 rupee into it every day and then you would break it on your birthday and take something so they would say when children were unwell they would break open their money piggy bank and give it to them say count and see what you will do with all this money how much money you have and count if you keep on putting the same money until your birthday how much will be that would distract them from their illness from worrying about it so money gives this false sense of security that false sense of purpose in life and you go and ask all those people who are for them money is not a deficient they got 
abundance of wealth and still there is more discontentment, more insecurity. There is no peace or joy there. The real wealth is the gunas of the daiva, the four pillars of knowledge. Dispassion is a great wealth. Viveka, being interested in knowledge is a great wealth. All the shat sampati, that is the real wealth. Mumukshitva is a great attainment in life. Just to feel this bondage of life, how life is squeezing you from all directions and saying, I just want to get away from it. That desire is a great wealth. Not these little things which come and go. Hmm? I think we should, can we stop here today and then we'll continue next time. So let's pray and bless everyone. We want everyone to be happy because everyone is in fact me alone. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunattu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadhita Mastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Sarve Bhavantu Sukinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschidukabhatave Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Hari Shri Guru Bhyor Namaha Hari Om